Welcome back to Assertiveness. We are talking about public transport. And just before we went for uh, an ad break, we were talking about the fact that how the likes of how train are they just not reasonable you know and more than it being reasonable it's not accessible you spoke about the fact that even still even though i was going to use the how train i still needed my own transport to be able to get me to the station so the likes of in metro rail how was have you ever used it i yeah the last time i used it um when did i last use metro rail i think i was 12. okay with my grandmother and yo, I guys, Metro Rail. The one thing I fear, and it happened when when uh, we were on Metro Rail. There's a time where I don't know the train just stops, ne? And they say all change. All change. Yeah. What does that mean? Havoc. That's what it means. <laughs> havoc. It means havoc because everyone just dashes out and they're train. jumping over railway lines into no. another train and it's just chaos. it's crazy it's chaos and people are trying to go in people are trying to come out come out so it's just it's your your but you, you what you're saying to me is that there's actually no system there's no system a working system no there's just this lady who's just gonna be um sitting in some office and is gonna announce all change please <laughs> ah, and you and know it's loose and it's so crazy because even labo coco are just like eric they're just okay. like okay we're doing this now and i was like yo okay <laughs> now 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 imagine a, a young 12 year old but in his people who is the first time he's in a in a, in a, in a train i'm just like but you are all change are we dying oh, what's going on oh, and my oh, grandmother my is like Let's like, do this. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Yeah. Jeez, guys, is, is, is that really the, 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 the status of, of, of public transport in our country? I'm not going to lie. I, okay, maybe it was because it was during the 2010 World Cup. We used the train with my sister. There were trains allocated from Pretoria to um, Soccer City. Okay. So then I think we caught the wrong train because those were not tourists. And those were not. <laughs> no, it was just. Dark and shady and scary. Dark and shady. People oh, were wow. looking at us okay. like, no, I mean dark literally as in like the lights oh, were Oh, jeez, when you said oh. dark, I thought you said, oh. look, you started off by saying those are not tourists. And then you said it was just all dark. I like, so you're not seeing any yellow bones. No, no. You were like, you. Literally the lights, there was like one light here, one light there, one light. It was, it was dark. And I was like, okay, I feel like it's only me and you. Yeah. this entire train that's going yes. to the stadium and people are looking at us like we are gonna die like they are just ready to eat us up and you get that man who's yeah. like so this is so, yeah, but now I'm too late. <laughs> so wait people are actually in the train at, at, at that time for, for survival you know you're going for a recreational <laughs> thing and you f you feel you feel a sense of of guilt I, I don't know why but you feel you feel bad you know people this is their transport and when you are here because you want to see you are sala. You are saying you're taking selfies, <laughs> taking selfies, Latinas, Catalis, Film Sevens, you know? And it, I felt I felt disconnected with them. I felt even though I was kind of scared for myself, but I felt, why am I scared? Why am I even yes. not interacting with them? And you know, we're in the same transport. But I feel mm. a sense of disconnection. Rich, is 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 public transport for black people? Was it designed for us? Because <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I'm gonna be fair. I'm just gonna ask: Is yeah. it is it for black people? I think it definitely is. I think um, first of all, we can't all afford cars. Yes. Um, so I think public transport is is definitely designed for black people. If you look at where taxi ranks are situated, they are situated where black people live and where they are going to work. Mm -hmm. So it really is a system that is more or less created for us. Do we still get shocked when we see a white person oh, pulling for oh, the do. You don't see people? And actually, I use the metro bus yes. and there are some buses for certain routes that have white people where there's, there's a mix of white people. But the specific one that I get on um, comes from Yeovil. Okay. So it's mostly black people. Mm -hmm. I get on in Bramfontein and then it goes. So this one time there was actually a white lady who came in and it was a bit of a shock for everyone. Like, okay. They all look at her like... In the new oh, South no, Africa, it was, a, it was a shock. Yeah. But I also think it's because people in the Metro bus, we actually all know each other. 
But anyways, this lady came on and she was opening windows because she says it's <laughs> stuffy. And people were just like, yay. 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 We don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> so in that sense, I think, I think there are certain modes of, of public transport that really are for us black people. Is it? So, but is it, is it, did it become, okay, granted, obviously it got that way because black people were displaced and, you know, the, 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 the system at that time did it in such a manner that they, they put us in the homelands or whatever they call them in between, you know, from where we would work as, as, as domestic workers at garden people, garden boys or whatever they're called now. But is it that, is it, does the fact that we have we accept the behavior of people who are supposed to be responsible for public transport i.e the way taxis just think it's okay to just get into the yellow lane and drive and you are sitting in there with this man and his drive have we accepted their behavior we have i think initially it becomes a matter of i don't have a choice Okay. Because then, you're not driving. Yes. And then eventually you get used to the culture. I've been in taxis where people um, want the driver to do those illegal yes. things. They want the driver to go they drive imagine. in the yellow lane because we are late. They want the driver to skip the robot because there are no cars. So I think initially it's a thing of you don't have a choice. And then eventually it becomes the culture. You get used to it. Mm -hmm. So when a driver is actually obeying the rules of the road, you're like, hey, mm -hmm. I need to get to where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. That is actually very scary to think that there are people who actually who are sitting there and thinking, Kanti, why this taxi driver? Why I behave like... You know, like we're not late here. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, guys, yeah, that's, that's. But do you not then feel at at what point when you are in a in, in public transport do you fear for your life? Do you, does it ever cross your mind? That's All the time, every day. Every time you're inside. A very young, short prayer. Lord, take me as I am. You go in, because you would be sitting literally in traffic. Everybody's like, okay, this this it's traffic. It's jam packed. Yeah. What? And he decides by himself. By himself, consulting. no one. It's 15 of us by himself. Okay, no, let me just into the cy cycling lanes. Let me just go. Yeah. The shock that you get when you're thinking, okay, am I gonna get home safe? Can he see where he's going? Does he have a plan? Should a car come? Are we actually gonna get there safe? Yeah. But yeah. what can you say? Who are you? Like, what so can you there, say? There, there, there is no level of, of, of being vocal in a taxi. Definitely not. So you must just keep quiet and, and let it happen. Even with your actions, I remember someone telling... <laughs> but how are you supposed to control your actions? I remember someone telling a story of they got into a taxi in the front seat yeah. and she took the seat belt and she was about to clamp it on and the taxi driver was like, hey, this is not your car. <laughs> So if you wouldn't let her put the, t the seat belt on. This is not your car. So those things, those are such shocking stories. But to some extent, you don't, you can't even be vocal. You can't say anything. So you're not allowed to be vocal in a taxi. I think to some extent you are, you know, because like you always get loyal mama, that big yeah. one who's just going to be like, ah, ah. The one who's everyone's ah. mother. It's just share, Bola, Amina. Yeah. I've got a family to feed. So, you know, just, you know, chill a bit. Yeah. But like, I think it also brings in the excitement, you know, like seeing yourself there and you are yeah. in the mode of a young Schumacher there. But, you know, <laughs> it's... <laughs> but you are in the... In the Young yeah, um, it's, 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 it's scary. It is scary. And with, um, you know, the amount of accidents that we're mm. seeing these mm. days, it's just, it's so scary. But I think it's just, it's fun. You roll with it. You roll with it. Do you trust that your driver is always sober? No, no definitely, definitely not. not. <laughs> definitely not. He's not sober. And I don't think he took a bath. <laughs> You don't think you took a bath. You are not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, I wouldn't no, bear my money on it. But you give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Because let's give him Zulu. And yeah. you're Zulu, you know, you need to... Well, I took my bath. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm a Zulu our kids. You said they dominated the taxi industry. <laughs> That's what you told us. You said they had dominated the taxi industry. They own their drivers. Yes. Now you are saying you're not sure if by a case. Yes. So what are we saying, Atlet? What is the what is the conclusion at the end? I said by a case. 
Okay, so you're chi, so you're chi, yeah, like so. Bikers. Familiar. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. familiar, Sometimes. yeah. Ba or si, because... Who drive the taxi in when? Yeah? No, um, there's quite a lot of people who own taxis in the family. Oh, in your yeah. family. Do they bath? They do. Yes, they do. Okay. Why are you guys laughing? I didn't need to get an understanding of what... Look, I was, I, was, I was very shocked. I got into a taxi once and the taxi driver spoke to me in English. But like he was listening to hip hop. So I, I, I feel like the, the, the taxi industry is starting to evolve a little bit. Go to Durban. Yeah. Really? Young boys, young, you it's, know. It's crazy. Indians are just like, Indians are Q marshals. Jeez. Like, yeah. Easy. Pine Town, Genala, Genala. And it's like, get along, get along. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but wh why is it that when you get into a taxi and you find a, a woman driving, she's always so angry? It's always an angry woman who drives. You never get a friendly. Hello. Can I tell you, my, my, the bus that I take, the metro bus, the lady who drives it is a woman. And she is a staunch feminist <laughs> and I think to an extent and she's quite rough she drives very roughly and I think to an extent it's because there are so many men who Around drive her, yeah. and she's always trying to show them that hey you you're not gonna take advantage of me because I'm a woman and you're not gonna act crazy or act a fool or because I'm a woman so um, I think for some people because there are all, there's always this perception that men are better drivers than yeah. women which is not it's not not always true yeah, it's yeah, for 10 marks it can be discussed for 10 marks that yeah. so i think for those reasons there are those people who always are apprehensive to get onto a vehicle that's being driven by a woman but in, in this day and age of, of of accidents i mean you drive on the highway every single day you 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 have to do what you do you have to also bargain an extra hour or 30 minutes because you don't know what's going to happen there's a lot of accidents now my question is are you are you safer in a taxi than you would be in your own car actually i would say you're safer in a taxi okay you are a lot why? safer in the taxi why um i don't know but there's some sort of trust that i have towards taxi drivers okay. because um although they are rough and they uh will go crazy on the road but somehow they they have a way of you know keeping everyone safe. They have a system. Yeah, they have a system. And they know each other, you know, and they will always, they will always maneuver, you know, around. And they've been doing it forever, donkey years. And when you are in a private car alone, you're just, yeah, you're in danger. And it's just you alone there. They can just shove you out of the way. It's like, on, you know, it's like, yeah. But yeah, taxi drivers know, okay, there's now 16 of us in this car and Okay. Do you think they really think of the, f the 15 of you that are in the car? Or are they just, are they trying to hit the target? Exactly. Yeah, they said make a thousand rand, everything else that you make up that thousand is yours. I don't, I, do, I don't think you are safer in a taxi than you are in your own private car. I think accidents can happen wherever, whenever. And many times you will be in your taxi or in that car and you will not even be the cause of an accident. Someone else is the cause of an accident and you get implicated. So you are not safe in either. So it's, 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 it's all balanced to you. Yeah. It's not a matter of whom safe. But you know, you do hear people often say taxis are better drivers because they are, it always seems like they are ready. Taxi drivers are ready for any situation. Yes, like they like experience. they all go and do advanced driving or something <laughs> like that. It's like okay, you can avoid these kind of things. But I mean, but I think I think sorry, I think as well. I, I don't know taxi culture. I don't know what happens. But I think yeah. to an extent, there's a sense of pride knowing that I've never had an accident. I've been driving this taxi for 25 years yes. and I've never killed anybody. You know, yes. so they wanna you wanna maintain that I've never killed anyone and I've never crashed this taxi. So you wouldn't wanna wreck your reputation like that. So I I, I don't know. Maybe that's how they think. And considering the fact the taxi is not yours, so the taxi exactly. doesn't belong to the driver. So if he scratches it, you know, he's either going to have to pay for the damages or he's gonna lose his job. So he's like, you know what? This is my bread and butter, so... It's actually such a shame that we, we don't have a taxi driver himself, you know, sitting here and giving us the other side of, of the conversation because it almost comes across like it's easy for us to sit here and talk about them and, you know, have these discussions about them, but they don't have a voice. They don't have a platform where they can say, 
But nani has tied a man. He's a nema hundred rand, you know. And, 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 so when we come back from the ad break, we're going to discuss taxi culture. You touched a little bit on it. Taxi culture, what are the quirks? What are the fun things? You know, there must be something fun about taking a taxi that people in their private little cars don't see every day. Do stay tuned in.